Today in Matthew's Gospel, we hear Jesus talking about welcoming and being welcomed. In fact, the entire chapter the reading is from, chapter 10, is part of a discourse that Jesus gives as he sends the twelve apostles out, empowered and instructed to proclaim the good news that the reign of God is near. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus summons the twelve and gives them authority to heal and cast out demons. And then, Matthew tells us, Jesus sent the twelve disciples out to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim the good news. The apostles are also commissioned to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Jesus then goes on to warn the disciples that their mission will be dangerous and will stir things up, but encourages them to have courage and hold to their mission and be bold in their proclamation. Jesus talks about the consequences as well for those who will not listen. He says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. And he also gives them a bit of a carrot to hold out to help persuade people to listen, saying, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. I don't know about you, but I find that a little bit hard to get my head around. What does Jesus mean by welcoming a prophet? It can be easy to assume that what Jesus meant when he talked about welcome was the set of cultural expectations that existed in his day around welcoming and extending hospitality to visitors. It can make us think of ancient cultural expectations around hospitality to strangers, such as offering food, drink, and shelter. Our minds might also go to contemporary notions of hospitality, such as how you're made to feel at home when you are visiting someone, or what you do for others when they visit you. Just a few verses earlier, Jesus instructs his disciples about what to do, depending on whether or not they are welcomed and their words are listened to. In other words, Jesus is connecting true welcome with hearing or receiving the words and message of the prophet. Basically, he's telling the disciples, you can consider yourself truly welcomed if and when your message is welcomed. And so it might help us to understand the phrase, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, as basically saying, whoever, whoever receives and welcomes the message of the prophet in the name of the one who sent the prophet, i.e. in the name of Jesus. And so we see that the message isn't simply about extending a welcome or offering hospitality. It's a much more direct message about the rewards of accepting the message that is offered to us in the name of Christ and the consequences of not doing so. And now let's talk about the last part of that statement by Jesus about receiving a prophet's reward. A reward usually brings to mind something we receive or are given. It has a bit of a passive aspect to it. However, the word that gets translated as receive in this passage actually has a much more active meaning than the word receive might imply. A more accurate translation might be to take up with one's hands or take hold of in order to use. Kind of like if we were to pick up or take hold of an axe in order to chop wood. I suppose it then begs the question, what is the prophet's reward, the reward of the righteous? What is it we are offered and asked to take hold of and use once we have welcomed the prophet and received and accepted and internalized their message? Perhaps it's courage. 
Perhaps it's the reassurance Jesus gives those that he's sending out, that even the hairs of your head are all counted, and everyone who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Perhaps the prophet's reward is the courage of the mind, heart, and spirit of Christ working in us. So what from this exploration today can we take with us for the journey of faith? Perhaps we start with the fact that one of our first challenges is to discern between the false prophet and the true prophet. Then are we able to welcome the prophet in the sense that Jesus meant in terms of truly welcoming their message? And finally, once we welcome the message, we must ask ourselves, will we take hold of the prophet's reward, the courage of the mind, heart, and spirit of Jesus abiding with us, and make use of it to ourselves proclaim the good news and participate in the fulfillment of God's reign of justice, reconciliation, and healing? May it be so. God being our helper. Amen.